Welcome to lesson 11 of Learn C. Um, this is going to be a very slight uh, uh, deviation from the um, uh, lesson 10 here. Uh, we're going to make the um, averaging program much, much more generalizable. And we're going to introduce a new topic, the command line, calling a program from the command line, and um, how we can actually enter data in into the program itself from the command line. Okay, so we're starting here with uh, lesson 10. I'm going to control A, control C. I've already made a directory lesson 11, and in it I put uh, O10 and O1000.txt. Uh, So this would run on it if I compiled it, right? Um, this is just lesson 10, uh, lesson 10's program. All right, this 2000 thing bugs me, right? I mean, it's uh, we're not using this, we're not using this for anything else but calculating the average, and we're just scrolling through a sub i twice. We, we're doing it once as a while loop, once as a for loop. Why don't we just do it all at once? For example, if we just said sum equals zero, and in here just said sum equals sum plus a sub i, right? It would that would then we would, that would obviate the need for this thing, right? For this whole program, and we don't even need to store a sub i because we're not using it for any other purpose. You're going to have some examples of computer programs moving forward here that actually you do need to store the array, the arrays, variables, and do lots of stuff with the data over and over again. But this, just getting average only, you don't. And so instead of constraining ourselves to 2,000 points, what if we just did this? Right? Um, and temp. What if we just did that? that? That way we'd get the whole thing, and then we can just go all the way down here, and we just don't need any of that. Oh, that's a lot quicker, and we don't, um, uh, and we don't have to worry about the, so the size up to a certain point. I'm, I've been sort of um, keeping a detail from you, and that is how big of how big of a number can n store? How many points can n store? It turns out there's not so many, and so we have to come up with something other than an int for really, really big files. But for now, this is uh, looks this is starting to look like a pretty generalizable algorithm to calculate the number of points. Cool. All right. So um, the only thing left now is we could do this for a, a thousand, do it for uh, ten, but instead I'm going to put in arc v. RV1. Putting argv1 in there. Wow, what does that do? So well, if you go up to the top here, main argc and argv, those are things that are inputs to the overall program from outside the program, actually from the operating system itself. Argc is the number of arguments that's in there. So one is going to be the actual name of the program that you call, and then uh, then if you have other arguments that you're going to give as an input, it's going to have those be the second, third, fourth, and so it'll be two or three, right? argv, argv0 is the name of the program that you ran. argv1 is the first argument after the, um, uh, the name of the program. So I'm going to show you how this argv1 works. Just double check. So we're going to save them all. Yes execute compile zero error zero one but we're not going to run it we're not going to run it from the environment we're going to run it from the operating system so command prompt go to command prompt now i'm going to go cd my desktop now i'm pressing desk and then i press the tab key it auto completes for me then i'm going to do c code c c change directory capital C, then tab complete, because it's a space. You see, if I have a space in the name of my folder, it has to do it in quotes. 
right? It'll do it for you. I mean, I just tab completed and it automatically did it for me, but um, uh, um, but I had to I had to use tab complete in order to get it right. That's why I per in general I don't normally have spaces in my um, file names for because I'm doing a lot of command line stuff. By the way, command line. Let's just let's talk about this for a minute. Right. So here's my roots. There's my home directory, Lars Olson, and in it are documents, desktops, downloads, all the normal folders that are in there. So this is my home folder or directory. And then CD is change directory, change directory into desktop. So now I'm in the desktop, change directory into code. Now I'm in the code. Now I'm going to see what's in there. So just like opening up a folder, you can say DIR. So I've got lesson one, lesson two, lesson 11. So I'm going to CD lesson 11, CD lesson 11 directory into lesson 11 and so now you see Lars Olson desktops C code lesson 11 that's the folder I'm in folder inside of a folder inside of a folder or in the old-fashioned way of saying it directory inside of a directory inside of a directory so I do a dir and here I've got 010.txt 1000.txt but then I have this exe file right so so to run it all I have to do is say the name of it lesson 11.exe and then I need to put an argument in the second one. I'm going to do 010, 010.txt. That's the name of the file I want to open and run and do all that. So this is argv0, and this is argv1, and argc would return back the value of 2 because there are two arguments being called at the command line. The average of 10 numbers is 0 0.47, da, 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 the same one I got when I ran it again. If I want to run 10, uh, 1,000, I don't have to recompile. I don't have to do anything. I just have to push arrow up, gave me the last command, two zeros, boom. Wow, that is amazingly efficient. There are languages you can write in the operating system itself called script languages, you know, scripting languages. And you can actually automate a lot of this process. So if, you, if somebody gave you thousands and thousands of files to do, you could just automatically do it. You wouldn't have to recompile, read, link, do all this stuff. You could just use the command line argument to input the data file, 010, 0000, and so on. Wow, that is, now we're starting to see the power of C programming. Uh, C programming can, can be automated to give, to give you incredible power to do, to do the analysis of lots and lots and lots of different files. It requires you to do this command line stuff, but still, it's pretty cool. All right, one more little thing here. Um, what if I did less than 10,000, right? Ooh, average of zero numbers is, holy crickets, what is that? Well, this file doesn't exist in this directory. And so it didn't load any numbers and it divided by zero. And so it gave me this, inf this term basically for infinity. Wow, that's error. This is, this is not an error proof or an, an idiot proof program. This lesson 11. We don't have any way to check and make sure was the file there is it, it does a file have points in it how many points came up we don't have any error checking in our programs so that's for next time next time we're going to do some error checking of our inputs to programs but for now we've gotten uh, really far we were able using this argv term argv1 term where argv1 ends up being here ends up being let me just move it over a little bit um, ends up being the, the second um, thing in a command line call using lesson 11.exe. So that's argv1 there. That's argv1 there. Um, you can open a file. You can open a file using, you can pass the name of the file name through the command line prompt um, using argv1. And it can be pretty large now because we're not storing all the data in an array, we're just temporarily storing it just for the one loop round we need to calculate the average. That's it, that's lesson 11.